Good morning and welcome to today's College Football Playoff National Championship Head Coaches News Conference. Before we begin, here are a few reminders. If you haven't already, please silence all electronic devices. ASAP will be providing the transcript from today's news conference. Following the coaches' opening remarks, we will take questions. We have microphone holders positioned throughout the room. Please make sure to give us your name and affiliation before asking your question. And as a reminder, we do have room down front for still photographers only, and we just ask that you please stay down. So to make sure that everybody on the back riser can, can get what they need. We are joined by Georgia head coach Kirby Smart and Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Coach Smart, we'll start with you. Opening remarks when you're ready. Yeah, first I'd like to thank uh, all the NCAA, CFB staff, um, the SEC office for what a tremendous job they've done in supporting our program and um, helping us get to this point. You know, the last event we were at, we thought it was a first class event. It's been the same way since our arrival here. Um, our kids are certainly excited. I think what you've seen over the course of the last few weeks is what college football is all about. You've got a great group of student athletes for four teams who have been given an opportunity to do a special things. And our kids are really excited. I think it's really great for our fan base to be right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, a special place for us. Also the home of SEC football and championships and we got two SEC teams in it. I'm certainly honored and uh, privileged to be competing against a you know, great university that's kind of been the, the, the landmark of college football over the last 10 to 12 seasons. And uh, I know my experience is there working with um, the late uh, Mal Moore, Bill Battle, Coach Saban himself, have helped me tremendously uh, in my career. But we're honored and privileged to compete against what's a great program. <clears throat> and they've done a tremendous job. And I think it's kind of lost in the shuffle of how well they have been able to compete at a high level for a long time and almost take it for granted at times. Um, but we're expecting an exciting football game on Monday night. Our players are just enthused, excited to be in this opportunity, and uh, we'll make the most of it. And really want to appreciate the coverage that you guys give us. Thanks. Coach Saban. Well, I'd also like to thank uh, the college football playoff and executive director uh, Bill Hancock. Um, this has certainly been a first class event for our team and our organization and the people in our organization. And uh, we're certainly excited and happy to have the opportunity as an organization to play in the college football playoff, uh, the championship game um, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, which has been uh, a place where we've had several opportunities to play. And, I think our players always look forward to the challenges of playing here. Um, I've been really, really pleased with what this team has been able to accomplish this year. Um, we had to overcome a lot of adversity, and uh, each and every time guys have stepped up and continue to compete at a high level, and um, something that um, we have a tremendous amount of appreciation for our staff and uh, all the players on our team for what they've done and the opportunity they've created. Uh, for themselves to play in the uh, championship game. Uh, I think um, we're playing against an outstanding team. I think Kirby and his staff has done a fabulous job at Georgia in terms of uh, the high level that their players compete at, the quality of players that they have, how well they play together as a team, and uh, certainly they deserve a lot of congratulations for what they've been able to accomplish this year. And, I think it's two great teams. Uh, it'll be a great competitive game, and um, our players are certainly looking forward to the challenges and the opportunity of playing in the championship game. We'll open it up for questions. Again, as a reminder, we've got Mike Polder's position throughout the room. Please give us your name and affiliation. We'll start over here on our left-hand side, gentlemen. Over here, uh, Farhan Aldridge from TSN. Uh, guys, a lot's been made about the relationship the two of you had coaching with one another. Coach Smart, if there's one single biggest thing that you learned from Coach Saban, what was it? Well, this is not the first time I've answered this question this week, so I'll, I'll be happy to answer it again. Um, but probably the, the, the single greatest thing is just the, the level of um, commitment to the organization, uh, holding everybody in the organization to a standard that he 
kind of embraced himself. You know, he never asked anybody in the organization to work any harder than he did. Um, he held every person on the staff, and I'm not talking about his coaching staff, I'm talking about the entire organization, to be at their best. And I think that's sometimes a lost art in some organizations. You see successful business organizations run that way, but you don't always see athletic programs run that way. And I think he does a tremendous job of that. If there's anything I took, it's being in that seat and uh, having to be in command, make decisions, and make sure that everybody understands the message that's coming from top down and the standard that you want people to work to. And I got a lot of respect. You know, I, I don't think people appreciate what he's been able to do in the most competitive college football league for a long time. And when you start talking about what he's been able to do, I think it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. We're going to take our next question over here to our right. Nick, Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Uh, you talk a lot about the challenges of guarding against complacency and human nature that comes with it. When you have success, to try to be successful again, that's hard. Uh, your goal is to try to manage that in others and your team. How, what motivates you to stay, to, to, to uh, not be complacent? Well, I, I think that uh, I'm always looking for the next challenge. Um, I don't know if it's the way I was raised or whatever, that you know, you're kind of only as good as your last play, as your last game. Um, I think everyone's heard me talk a lot about the fact that success is not a continuum. It's momentary, and um, it's human nature to get satisfied and uh, get a little complacent when you have success. but. Uh, in a competitive business like we're in, where there's always a next challenge, there's always a next game, there's always a better team to play, uh, if you have that mindset, you're not going to be able to play with any consistency. And if you can't play with consistency and performance, you're not going to really have a lot of success long term. So um, I hate to lose. And I've been around Kirby long enough, and he's been on my basketball team long enough that I know he hates to lose too. Um, and I think that has something to do with it. So. Um, you're, you're, you're always ready for the next challenge and you always understand that people are going to be a little bit satisfied and you have to make sure that um, everyone is, you know, ready for the next challenge. We'll go right down here in front in the middle section. Uh, Murray Poo, Bulldog Illustrated. Uh, both coaches, uh, Kirby with your team flying back from Los Angeles and uh, Coach uh, Saving years coming back, of course, from New Orleans. Uh, were you able to approximate practice uh, during the week, uh, kind of get it close to a normal week as you could? Uh, how satisfied were you when they adapted to that uh, situation? You know, I think it was a challenge. I, you know, I, I think everybody forgets that last year there was nine days between these games, and I certainly think it's a fast turnaround. I think a big deal's been made about it, but we all know that, that both teams uh, really had the same time. You know, our, our travel was different, but they played a much later game. So they had, you know, had to play much later at night and get finished much later at night. So it's tough in both parts. I think I saw early in the week the, the trouble with it, but as the weeks passed, you know, these guys have been practicing for 15 games, and, and also they, they've had to practice for bowls, really 15 practices. So you start looking at some of the cumulative effect, and you got to be smart with your team. You got to know what you're doing. I, I, in a perfect world, I'd like to have a little more time between the championship games, but it just that's the way it felt this year, and uh, that's the way it is. So much time to prepare for one game, and then a really quick turnaround that creates a lot of pressure on these kids for the short turnaround. Basically, as coaches, you know, we had probably about a normal amount of time that we would have for a normal game during the season. I think the circumstances are a little bit different because of the travel, bowl games, staying in a place, trying to get back, those types of things. But um, it was a little tougher turnaround for the players. I don't know if it's physically, emotionally, psychologically, however you want to put it, early in the week, you know, to refocus on another big game. Um, but I think as the game, as the week, you know, went on, uh, you saw them recover and. Uh, I think they're all excited about playing in the game. And the situation is the same for both teams, and um, you know, it, it, I don't, I don't think it'll have any effect on the outcome based on the circumstances. It'll just be about you know the players who go out there and how they compete in the game. Our next question over here in the left. 
I'm Justin Feller from Fox 5 Atlanta. Coach Saban, in 2015, right before Kirby was hired at Georgia, you said the guys you coached with for a long time start to feel like part of your family. Uh, a lot's been made of the X's and O's of playing against former assistants, but what is it like to see someone go through the highs and lows of being a head coach and ultimately end up here? Well, I'm extremely proud of uh, anyone on our staff who goes on and does a good job. Um, I, I, one thing that I've said is I always tell guys, and I told Kirby this when he left, you know, be, be, your, be your own man, be yourself. Do, do it the way you think it ought to be done. Don't try to be somebody else. And I think he's done a, a fantastic job of that. But, you know, the, what you all don't understand is um, you know, this guy was on our staff for, I don't know, 10 years. Um, you know, Terry's there when his babies are born. Um, I mean, you become a part of a family. That, that's what you thats what you do when you're together for a long time. And um, I think there's, you know, a special appreciation for uh, those people in your family, the contribution that they made to the success that you had. And, um, you know, you, you always want to see them do well uh, when they leave because that's what they worked hard for and you're glad that they got the opportunity. Um, and it is a personal when we have to compete against each other, you know? I mean, I'm sure he wants to win for his players and we certainly want to win for our players. And it's uh, not a personal thing. We're gonna take our next question from the far left again, staying on our far left. Dan Matthews, 6A, the fan. For both coaches, what would you say is the single biggest concern entering the Marlins game? For us, it's, it's, it's probably simple. You know, they, they've got an extremely physical offensive and defensive line. I mean, they are uh, as big and as physical as we faced. And uh, we know we like to run the ball and we like to stop the run. Um, but when you look at the, the, the unit that he's comprised and, and got, it's, it's, it's a dominant physical team. And, uh, we've got a match to physicality. Um, they do a tremendous job in all phases. There's no weakness when you look across the board. They play their best players on special teams. And, you know, we've taken a lot of pride in special teams this year at uh, University of Georgia, and we know what we're up against in these guys because they've got tremendous athletes, tremendous speed, um, and they, you know, they've had some injuries to deal with. They've overcome those and created some depth with a lot of the injuries they've had getting some guys back. But the biggest concern for us will be the, the, the size of the offensive and defensive lines and the physicality of those guys. I would say that my biggest concern is is how, how do we um, execute in terms of things that's, that are important in having success in a game. Uh, some of them Kirby mentioned. Uh, because they're two physical teams, can you control the line of scrimmage? Um, are you going to make the kind of errors in the game that are going to be critical factors in the outcome of the game? And turnovers would be, you know, a big part of that. Um, tackling, you know, I always worry about it in, in, in bowl games and games where you haven't played for a long time. We missed some tackles in last week's game. And the quality of running backs that they have and the skill players that they have, I think, you know, those factors are going to be huge in a game in terms of uh, doing a good job in those areas. So uh, when you're playing against a really good team, and probably two teams that are fairly evenly matched, and two teams that, that philosophically are not a whole lot dissimilar in terms of the things they want to do to win, run the ball, you know, turn the ball over, uh, play good field position, be good on special teams. Uh, so it's going to be the errors and execution right, that have a, a, a critical effect on the outcome of the game. We're going to take our next question from the very far right section. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. With the hay kind of in the barn, I wonder what each of you are doing today specifically and, and how long we'll do it. You know, I'm just doing whatever he did. So. <laughs> Not a whole lot of difference. I mean, we're trying to go watch a movie tonight. They're trying to go watch the movie at the same place. So we're having it all set 10 minutes. Uh, but I think, you know, I think each, every program I've ever been a part of, there's some similarities in what they do the day before the game. And I think every coach has his, uh, I don't know if you call it superstitions or uh, routine might be a better word, that they use um, to get themselves ready, get their staff ready, get their players ready. And I think the next 24 hours can be critical. I've talked a long time about this playoff being perspective. With what, what perspective do you, do you take this game? 
And I think that's the one spot that Alabama had a competitive advantage because they got a huge chip on their shoulder, thanks to you guys. And some of you guys say that they shouldn't have been included. So they've got something to prove. Um, and I think every team that gets playoffs got something to prove. But how you approach these in the last 24 hours and the things you do mentally are really important to your team's success. I, I think the hay in the barn analogy that you use is probably not something that I ever really, I don't really think of it that way. Um, I, I think that from yesterday's practice, um, which is you know, about 48 hours from the game, give or take, I think the mental practice that a player has, whether it's making calls, watching film, um, whether you have meetings, whether you have walkthroughs, whether you have chair drills. Uh, I think those mental reps that they get, I think physically the hay is in the barn. You're not out there blocking and tackling people. But, um, and we've always tried to focus in those from Thursday's practice until the game, you know, having several opportunities for guys to get the kind of mental practice that may be able to eliminate some mental errors in the game that could affect the outcome of the game. Take our next question from the left hand side up on the riser. Okay, we're going to transition over here to the right hand side back in the front. Uh, Kurt Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, <clears throat> Kirby, first though, which movie are you going to see? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure the name of it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm excited about it, but uh, <laughs> I've been told it has a lot of purpose. And, and uh, we got a special release. I think uh, Alabama was able to watch it last week. But I think it's about uh, 12 strong. Yeah, it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're watching, don't ask. <laughs> uh, Nick, uh, as long as you were with Kirby, uh, watching your game from afar, you seem to yell at Kirby a lot less on the sideline than maybe some assistance. I wonder if. You see the most, uh, the assistant you've been most aligned with in terms of philosophy.